Hey, this is Burt Brocker, head coach of Texan Buick and GMC. And I'm proud to bring you the tailgate from Texan Plaza. That's right at the all new Turner Stadium. And this year, it's gonna be hosted by the one and only from 610 Sports Radio, Mr. John Lopez. Yes, sir. We are back. Another week, another great show for you here at the tailgate at Texan Plaza. We've got another great show lined up for you. Of course, we got Burt Brocker from Texan Buick GMC, and we've got all kinds of other things for you as well. Let's line up the show. All righty, let's line up the show. We're going to talk a lot of baseball today because we've got a couple of big leaguers here. Uh, one current, one former, Lance Pendleton from right here in the Kingwood area is going to be joining us as well as Brian Bohannon, a young phenom in his day. He's got a lot to say, I'm, I'm sure, about guys that are coming up, maybe being rushed up right now. We're going to head out to uh, the plaza, Texan, Texan GMC Plaza, although we're under shade today because of a little rain, but we're going to find out uh, and catch up with Warren Barnhorst, who is in fact one of the original members of the 12th man kickoff team. You may remember him for something that he did in the Cotton Bowl that was unforgettable. And of course, uh, Valerie Jackson and the team of the week, I think they're here. The Atascacita basketball girls team as well as a really interesting story it's called the reach program and campbell roper and the kids from reach are here right yeah. yes they are you're going to want to hear this but we're going to start right here with pga professional chris stroud and bert i know you have a lot to ask here about chris and some of the things going on exactly i had an opportunity to meet chris uh, last year at uh, pete cerna's tournament he put on for autism chris was out there on the par three hitting shots for everybody and uh, uh exactly and uh to, to step that up the next level pete uh, chris is on the PGA Tour. He uh, qualified next year. He's in the top at uh, number 80, number 85, and then, you know, in the in the PGA listings. So he's got his card for next year. And uh, tell us a little bit about what's all going on with you. Uh, this is, I got two months off. This is good. It's the only little small uh, off season that we have. Uh, very small for most of us. There was actually a tournament in Malaysia that I qualified for, but did, did not go. So I'm home with the family. Enjoy two months off. Get ready. Got a new house in the Woodlands. We're kind of doing some renovations and just uh, enjoy two months off before we start out in January. Very good season for Chris this year. 85th on the money list in the PGA. Now, uh, let's talk about that. You know, uh, we've got some baseball players coming up. Much like baseball, there is a groove that you find. Uh, you know, I always talk about golf. It's a very simple game played by complex people and I think that's that's a way to look at it isn't it uh, very true I mean I played baseball for 12 years I know baseball very well and I loved all sports as, when I was younger and uh, it's uh, it's a very difficult sport just like baseball golf I mean golf is very difficult and um, it takes a lot of work a lot of patience um, and you got to get some good breaks too and just like these guys I'm sure they'll say the same thing in the, about their careers what worked for you this year? Is it, would you call it breakthrough? I mean, it was definitely a step up. Small breakthrough for me. Uh, we, we really thought I was going to win my first tournament this year. I think I'm definitely going to win one next year. Um, it's, just, it's just small steps as long as you keep getting better. The breakthrough for me this year was putting. I really putted well the last six months. Um, and as we all know as golfers, that's number one most important thing. And if you want to be on the tour, you got to putt great. Well, you know, we are in the Kingwood, Atascacita area. You live in the Woodlands. These are these are golf hotbeds in the country, much less uh, in, in the city, in the greater Houston area. Uh, you play with a lot of good golfers, and then you played with me. Uh, but then, <laughs> but you play with a lot of good golfers. Advice for young golfers. You came up from Port Neches Groves all the way through the ranks uh, to get to the PGA. It, it's the elite, the best of the best, as they say. What do you tell young golfers who have the physical mechanics? How do they get to the next step? Start early. I, I played early. I played. I started getting serious golf when I was 9 to 10, and some kids are starting earlier than that. I played all, all sports through high school, uh, and then I got into high school, and my high school coaches were like, look, you can't do it all. You need to choose your sports, and I, I really got lucky. I got pushed into golf. I got hurt in football, so I was like, you know what? Let's just do Let's get serious with golf, and uh, I played the South Texas PGA Junior tur uh, Tour for a couple of years, came to HGA, Houston Golf Association, and that really kind of gave me the insight of what I needed to, I needed to get better. A couple of years later, AJGA, and kept moving, college, Lamar University, and then now I'm on the PGA Tour. You know, lately on my radio show at Sports Radio 610, I've been trying to get through interviews with golfers without asking a question about Tiger Woods because every golfer is asked about Tiger Woods. However, the President's Cup is huge. The President's Cup is upon us. Tiger, in a much a controversial decision, was appointed to the team, uh, basically. Your thoughts on that, and, and more specifically, some of the guys uh, like Keegan Bradley that were left off that did could have qualified. 
That was a tough decision by Freddie Couples. I mean, I, he, he knows what he's doing. Um, I think Tiger is more of a wild card this year. Um, nobody really knows where his game is. Tiger may not know. He's got a lot of stuff going on in his life. But you know what? He's Tiger Woods. He's the best of all time, a lot of people say. And he's, he's proven it that he can play some golf. Um, Keegan Bradley got, you know, he may have gotten pushed aside, just kind of la just kind of bad timing, I would say. Uh, but he had a phenomenal year, and, you know, I, I still think it's a good decision either way. I think it was almost a 50-50 call. I think it's, there's going to be some press about it no matter what. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see Tigers playing. I, we all want to see him play, and we, we want to see him play better. So you're taking uh, some time off right now, well-deserved. Uh, your schedule real quick and uh, some of your goals for the upcoming season, because I know, like you said, it's time for another breakthrough. Yes, uh, big break, a big goal for me next year, win one at least. Um, win my first PGA Tour event. More importantly, finish top 30 on the money list and get in that top 50 world rankings, which is a whole different deal. World golf rankings are totally different than, it's kind of like the BCS. It's a whole different thing. But, uh, you know, just keep getting better every year. Um, stay healthy, really important in golf. And just enjoy it the whole ride. Just enjoy my ride. Everybody, this is Chris Stroud. You're going to see him in a green jacket someday. Uh, let's move on to uh, where are my guys? Where are my guys over here? We've got uh, Warren Barhorst. Let me ask you something right here. You, pro you all have heard about the, the 12th man kickoff team. You all know about that. Uh, this is one of the original members of the 12th man kickoff team. This is uh, Warren Barhorst, uh, who was one of Jackie Sherrill's picks uh, for that team. Uh, and tell me about first, and I never, I never have asked you this. I've talked to you before. The intimidation factor. Now, every athlete wants to compete. Every athlete thinks they're really good. But when you see, what, 240-something kids out there, what was that like? It's pretty crazy. You know, you, you walk out. I think the day I tried out, there was about 350 kids that came out. They answered an ad in the newspaper, and, you know, there's some girls that try out and guys. So you look at that and think, okay, I'm better than that kid. But there's some kids that are pretty physically fit that you think, okay, that kid's no way going to beat you or beat me. And, you, you know, you keep going to the wall every day. And, and if your name's on the wall, it means you're gone. So that's how it worked. It worked. And you just kept going and going and going. And eventually, you know, a coach comes to you and says, you know, Barworth, we think you can contribute. Uh, you made it. That's like a walk of death. I mean, uh, did, and you had to have known some guys that you thought were pretty good that went to that wall and saw their name. There were a lot of guys that went to the wall and saw their name. And, and I think, you know, I had a kid that was in a class of mine, uh, Renee Cassis, who ended up making the team the year after uh, I graduated. And he asked me, you know, you're on the 12th man, what's the deal? I said, are you scared? And he said, what do you mean? I said, are you scared? And he said, no. I said, can you run fast? He said, yeah. I said, you'll make it. And he did. So That's fantastic. All right, 1987? 87 football season, 88 Cotton Bowl. 1988 Cotton Bowl. Tim Brown wins the Heisman Trophy. We're going to show you some highlights, I'm sure, uh, of a kid, some crazy kid with his hair on fire, running down the field, tackles Tim Brown. He just won the Heisman, mind you, and you rip the towel off of his belt. Uh, Give us a little backstory on that. That had to be a little bit of a plan. There was a little bit of a plan. Bef before the game, uh, Coach Cheryl had called us in, and we had been known to cause some problems. And our, our 12th man towels were sacred to us, and people tried to take them from us. So we would play games trying to steal towels from the other teams and, and play some intimidation. And Chet Brooks came into the huddle before this kick and said, hey, take Tim Brown's towel. It'll drive him insane. And I just happened to make the tackle and got lucky to, to pull his towel off his belt. And it did drive him insane, no doubt about it. Real quick, about 30 seconds, your thoughts on the Aggies? to the SEC, and they're starting to catch a little bit of a groove here. Seems like they're, they're becoming a, a quality, a big-time program. I think the SEC is a great move for Texas A&M. I think uh, it, it's a great move for, for Texas in general to bring that, that, that that's Southern sports over this direction. The TV market's going to get better and better. It's a wonderful thing for all of our thing. We're, we're, people say we're not going to compete there. You're going to be surprised. We're, 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 we're going to compete very well in all the sports in the SEC. Hey, one more thing right here with Warren Barhorst, Texas A&M, former Texas A&M 12th man team member. Big event coming up in Aggieland. I am dying to go. Can't make it. Tell me about Billy Pickard, 50 years worth, huh? Billy Pickard, we're going to, you know, he was one of the junction guys. Most people don't know it. He, he was there as an athletic trainer with Bear Bryant way back in the day, and we're going to roast him on uh, November 18th before the Kansas game. We're going to have a nice little dinner for him for the 12th Man Kickoff Team Foundation. you got to come out and, and join us and, uh, and have a, uh, enjoying some great stories and a good time. We talk about stories. Some of the great, great names that are going to be there. I know Jackie's going to be there and a lot of other guys. Who else is going to be there? Slocum's going to be there. Be there. Uh, there'll, be, there'll be coaches from all over the old Southwest Conference days. That uh, no, uh, Billy, um, Gene Stallings will be there. It's just uh, lots of former players that played uh, football during the eras that he was there. It's pretty amazing to look at Billy Pickard's life because he was there in the 1950s and he was there when I was playing. And if you go watch an AM football game today, he's still walking on the sidelines helping those kids out. For more information, 12th man KOT yep. dot com or org. org. 12th man, KOT.org. Get your tickets now. You can always look up best kickoff team.
Tuesday. I'm with you on that. That's Warren Barhorst, and I'm John Lopez. Coming up on the tailgate at Texan Plaza, how about baseball, Texas Rangers, World Series, Major Leaguers, past, present, and future, right here on the tailgate at Texan Plaza. Don't you go anywhere. Hey, it's Burt Brocker, head coach of Texan Buick GMC. And tonight we got some really, really good looking women compared to the big, ugly Eric Winston. So, anyway, let me introduce Ashley and uh, Mackenzie. Mackenzie Coda. So, here we go. Hi, I'm Mackenzie Coda. I'm a teacher here at Kingwood High School and Humble High School. Hi, I'm Ashley. And where did you graduate from? Uh, Kingwood High School. Awesome. These girls out here, you know, this is what it's all about. We talk about it all the time. We're here with the school district. We're here with everything else. So anyway, this is the teachers. They graduated. They went to school here. And anyway, this is just an awesome, awesome deal. Thank you all very much for taking time to come out. Thank no you. Thank you. Everybody, we are back. The tailgate at Texan Plaza. I'm John Lopez. That's Burt Brocker. We got a good baseball segment for you right here. Who doesn't like talking baseball? Let's talk uh, Baytown GM, G Baytown Buick GMC first, because I hear you have a new employee, Burt. Yes, I do. Uh, we had an opportunity. Brian Bohannon graduated with uh, Scott and Lloyd Tibbetts out there out of the North Shore area and uh, grew up with them. And Scott's actually general sales manager over there. And Brian contacted him here about two months ago and uh, recently joined our team. And, uh, of course, uh, you're going to get into his career and what his accolades all were, which is unbelievable. But uh, glad to have you part of the team, man. Thank you. Uh, you should be calling him boss. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on now. And Lance Pendleton joining us as well, as I mentioned. And uh, Lance uh, is a local, uh, big-time high school star as well, as Brian Bohannon was, and uh, former Astro, former Yankee, and now uh, free agents, uh, free agent in the Major League Baseball. We're going to get to the World Series and some of your personal things, but let's find out first from you where you are, where you stand right now with your career. I know you're getting ready uh, already, even though the World Series is still going on for next season. Yeah, well, uh, like you said, I'm a free agent right now. Now I, I was fortunate enough to make it up to the big leagues this past season for the first time, which was a uh, dream come true. I didn't know. You never know if you're going to get there until you get there. Uh, but uh, I'm a free agent now and, and looking to sign with, with the team. And we got some guys interested, teams interested, and we'll just see how it goes. Let's talk about the call. I mean, uh, everybody's seen the movie The Rookie, you know, and, and what it's like. And he was an older guy. Uh, what were you doing? Did you have a hunch? And what was it like getting the call? Hey, Lance. You're coming up. <laughs> well, no, I, I had no clue. And, and it was 3.15 in the afternoon. We were down on the field stretching for uh, batting practice and whatnot. And <laughs> Where was it? Uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania with the, with the Yankees. Long way from Scranton. Man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and the pitching coach says, hey, Pendleton, we need to see you up in the office. I had no idea. I'll tell you why I had no idea. There was two uh, big, big name pitchers down in double A that had just gotten hurt. I thought they were sending me down the double A. So I, it's about a three minute walk from the field to the coaching office. And, and the whole time I was madder than a pistol, uh, so mad at, at, at them for sending me down. And they said, hey, you're, you're heading up to New York. And, and I said, what? And, and, and they go, you're going to New York. And I said, oh, I thought you're sending me to Trenton to double A. And they said, nope. And congratulations and called my wife. She didn't believe me, but uh, it was a dream come true. That's fantastic. Now, Brian, you have quite the different story. You were the young phenom. You were tabbed as a major league prospect when you were, what, 17, 18 